right, you guys, we are at part six of Relentless. I don't know how this is gonna end, so please, please bear with me. I, don't, I think that you guys are okay at this point. Okay, so part five ended off with Messio Georgia calling Paul, giving him a heads up that Quentin has been up in these streets. So yeah, you guys, so Mina has decided to go ahead and meet Paul at the lounge in a couple more days. Um, just to hang out, have a couple of drinks maybe. So, Mina drinks now, honey. After a child and, and a couple of years of marriage, she has, she enjoys herself a glass of wine every now and then. So, let's cut to Paul, messing your Paul. Like I said, it, Paul is living in a, um, hotel couple of days until his home is completely ready. He's going to have the home renovated some before he officially moves in. So he's going to be living in a hotel for a while. Let's just put it out there. So this is Paul making a phone call. Okay. Hey, um, this is Paul. I have a job for you. I have someone I need for you to rough up a little bit. Um, I don't want him killed. Just rough up. You know, are you down for the job? Okay. Let me know if you're able to track them down. And if you can, I'll wire 5000 into your account. Thanks, man. Bye. So we could figure out what that's about, right? Fast forward two days later when it's time for um, Mina to meet Quentin at the lounge. And so this time she decided to dress like she's going to a lounge and not to a business meeting, right? So she arrives there and of course, um, Paula's already seated and he's like, hey, you looking really nice tonight. And she's like, thank you. So he kind of gives her a little hug and that's when Mina got a good whiff of his cologne, girl. Woo, child, he didn't smell like Old Spice. He smelled like, yes, I'm 50, but I'm fine. That's what he smelled. <laughs> That's what he smelled like with that just for just for me and a uh, beard uh, glossing in the light. So anyway, so she sits down and Paula's like, you know, I, I already took the pleasure of ordering us a bottle of wine. I take it the same wine we had last time. You seem to enjoy it. And she's like, yeah, that'll be fine. So um, she sits down and she's like, so how are you been? And he's like, this time Mina can tell that something is a little frazzled about Paul. He's not himself. This sounds familiar, doesn't y'all? He's like, I'm okay. It's just that, you know, some things have came up that's maybe putting a wrench in my plans, but I think I can, you know, work it out. She's like, oh, okay then. So they start dinner, they order dinner, and just start conversation. Now cut to Quentin. Quentin has just left another associate of him, of his, who he has hired to look into more um, background on Paul because Quentin has reached a dead end. No one would really talk to him, so he figured if he'll hire like a third person, a third party, excuse me, he will probably get more luck than he is. So Paul, excuse me, Quentin is headed home, y'all. He's two hours out from their little small town in Georgia. As he's going home, he noticed a man behind him following him very closely. So Quentin get over to the right. The man follows him on the right. Quentin changes lane. The man changes. Quentin figured, I need to lose this asshole because he is, what is he doing? So Quentin pushes the pedal to the metal and the guy is following him. At this point, Quentin knows that whoever this is behind him is chasing him. So Quentin, they're swerving in and out of traffic. Finally, Quentin makes a quick left-hand turn and the guy rams him and Quentin's car goes head in. He crashes into a ravine. Uh, crashes into a ravine. Let's cut back to Mina and Messy as Paul having dinner. Mina, Mina is sitting there talking. She's laughing, kicking it up with her good Judy Paul. <laughs> Kicking it up with Paul, honey. All of a sudden, she gets a call on her cell phone. She picks it up, and the person is like, "Hi, is this Miss? Hi, is this Mrs. Mina Larue?" She's like speaking. She's like, "Well, this is Nurse So and So at the hospital. Um, I'm here to inform you that your husband has been in a serious accident. We need for you to come down here ASAP." Paul can tell that Mina is like all shaken up, and she's like, "Oh my God, I I'll be on my way right away." And then that's when she hangs up the phone. Paula's like, is everything okay? 
and Mina's like, I'm so sorry, Paul. I have to cut this short. My husband has been in an accident. I have to leave. And so Paul is like, he gets up and he's concerned. He's like, well, you know, I'll check on you in a couple more hours if that's okay. She's, and she waves up and she heads out. So Mina heart is racing. She's starting to tear up. She goes over to her grandmother explaining what happened. She jumps into her car and heads out to this hospital again. That is about two hours away from where she's, from where they live at. Mina arrives at the hospital. Let's cut back to Paul. Paul calls his contact and say, hey man, what happened? I told you, just scare him a little bit. He's like, well, the asshole, excuse my language, y'all. This is how people talk that are criminals. <laughs> He's like, well, the asshole, I just wanted to veer him off and he started speeding. We were going like 80, 90 miles per hour and he went into a ditch. And so Paul said, if anything happens to my baby brother, you're dead. He clicks up the phone. Child, he's just threatening the phone. He ain't, he ain't about that life. So cut to Mina. She arrives at the hospital. The doctor um, pulls her to her side to talk to her. Paul has been in a really bad accident, you guys. He suffered um, some brain swelling. He has been in a, med he, they put him in a medical induced coma. Mina's like, well, can I see him? And the doctor said, yes, but only for a few. Um, his vitals are just stabilized, but we don't want to really, you know, do too, too much interaction, but we can't allow you to see him. So Mina is able to see Quentin. Honey, light bright is all... <laughs> Let me stop playing. He is um, has all of these tubes coming in and out, and Mina just starts bawling. And the nurse there is holding her hand and said, it'll be okay, honey. He, he's going to pull through, okay? So Mina heads out she looks down at her cell phone and she sees that her grandmother has called her probably to just check on her and courtney has called her too more than likely her nosy grandmother called courtney and let her know what happened so mina is heading out and that's when she heard someone behind her um say her name um, mrs larue hold up she turns around and she noticed a man walking towards her well he looked like a cop he finally comes up he's like hi my name is detective gonzalez um, I know this is probably not a good time, but do you have a minute? And Mina shakes her head. First of all, I want to say I'm sorry what happened to your husband. But secondly, we noticed that there were two separate tire tracks near the accident. And we have suspicion to believe that your husband was ran off the road. Do you know if he was, you know, had any trouble with anyone? Did he had it, have any, any known enemies? And Mina is shocked by this. To her knowledge, pa, I mean, Quentin, <laughs> Quentin was out on a business trip. So she's very shocked that here is by the way you guys her husband is in management consultant okay that's why he's always out on the road so Mina shocked she's like no she's like no Quentin never has any issues with anyone Quentin doesn't have anyone that's out to get him I mean if anything he's the person that people go to to squash things you know to smooth things over he's like the mediator most of the time and so the cop the detective excuse me looks at her kind of kind of um oddly and he's like well we noticed in his car that he had a couple of documents he wrote down a name paul and, she, and mina's like paul and he's like yeah paul and then he wrote down two other names a georgia jones and a tiara mcdonald do those names ring, ring a bell to you and tiara's confused she's like why her mind is racing now she's thinking why would quentin be looking into anything with paul and who is this tiara mcdonald girl we know we know who tiara who is this tiara mcdonald and who is this richard jones she's like no i don't know any of those those names don't sound familiar um to me so the detective believes her so he's like look um we're going to be investigating this over the next couple of weeks or so however long it takes to figure out who did this to your husband in the meantime here's my business card if you get any information please feel free feel free to phone me and mina looks down and sees his name as you know hector rodriguez and so she's like thank you so much detective and he's like okay you take care Mina drives home. She is crying, weeping in between, honey. She's trying to keep it together because she doesn't want to crash herself. She finally gives over to her grandmother. Her grandmother said, baby, I went ahead and set the guest bedroom for you. Why don't you just go ahead and spend the night? Mina's not going to argue with her. She's exhausted after the two-hour trip there and two-hour trip back. She gets home. She starts to fall asleep, and that's when she gets a, um, she noticed she has a new text message, and it's from Paul. She's too tired to read it, so she turns her phone off and doze off and falls asleep. Oh, y'all, we're going to go ahead and keep it going, because creativity is flowing now. Okay, where, where can we go from this? 
So Mina awakens to the smell of bacon and, and scrambled eggs and she can tell that her grandmother has been up cooking breakfast and she goes in and sees her baby Zaire already at the table with a piece of bacon in her mouth. And you know, Zaire was like, hi mama. And, and Mina says, good morning, baby. And so um, Zaire said, what's wrong, mama? She could tell Mina had been crying all night so her eyes were puffy. And um, her grandmother turned around and did this to her. They didn't want her to know yet about Quentin. So Mina just said, you know, I'm okay, baby. Mommy just had a hard time falling asleep. And so the baby's just laughing, finishing up her bacon child. Hell, I want some bacon now. So <laughs> Mina sits down and her grandmother comes over and she said, it's gonna be okay, sweetheart. He's gonna pull through. Mina calls her job and lets them know that she's gonna take a medical leave um, to care for her husband because the drive there and back, she probably will have to go ahead and get a hotel closer to the hospital he's in until he can get out of the uh, medical induced coma. He will probably only be in, the doctor let her know that he will only be in the coma for a week or so. They typically don't have them in a medical induced coma no more than two weeks, okay? They just want to make sure that the swelling goes down and that everything is stable, okay? So Mina is upset and that's when she turns uh, her phone's around and looks at the uh, text messages and she sees a message from Paul basically saying, if you need anything, please let me know. So Mina goes out to her car, you know, gets everything ready. She lets uh, the baby stay for her. So she goes up to her car, tries her car. Her car won't crank up again. Child, you might as well go ahead and hand this car in, Mina, get you a new. So she's she keep trying to try crank it up. She pops open the hood, tries to adjust some things with the battery because last time it was like a simple issue with um, a knob or something being loose. So she tried to figure it out. She couldn't. So who did she call? Mr. Relentless himself. So she's like, hi, I'm so sorry. Are you busy right now? Paul's like, well, no, I, I'm okay. What's, what's wrong? What is it? And she's like, my car won't start. Would you mind giving me a ride, ride into town? And she's like, yeah, sure, sure. So she said, thank you so much. So she gives him the address to her grandma. Paul said he was about 30 minutes out, so it may take him a minute to pick her up. But she's like, that's fine. So Mina, you know, puts her phone down. And she's so exhausted for everything that has occurred within the last 24 hours. She dozes off. That's when she awakens. She rouses herself up to hear talking. And she's like, who's that talking? So she goes downstairs and she sees Paul at the table with her grandmother. And her grandmother's face is so light up and bright. She hasn't seen her grandmother look, look like this ever since her before her um, papa passed away. <laughs> Paul must have that effect on all ages of women. <laughs> I'm so messy, y'all. So... Um, that's when, um, Miss, what is her name? Bernadine, Miss Bernie, Miss Bernie's like, Mina, <laughs> um, Miss Bernadine put down her coffee. Y'all ain't got no coffee mug. Bernie? This is going to be her coffee mug right here. Miss, Miss Bernie, Miss Bernie's like, Mina, hey baby, you, are you, did you rest some? I didn't want to wake you up. Your friend just stopped by, you know, not too long ago. And so I went ahead and fixed him some coffee and gave him some tea cakes. And so Paul got up and said, are you, are you okay? You ready to go? And so Mina said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go now. And so Hi. they go out and Paul turned to her around and said, look, you know, you don't have to explain to me what's going on, but I just want to let you know that I'm here for you, whatever you need. And so that's when he reached over and gave her a hug. And Mina, again, was confused over the feelings. It felt so good to be held. All right, y'all, that's part, I don't know. We're going to go to part seven next.